Hi, my name is Mark Bernat, and I'm a monetary economist. In this video, I want to talk about something very important. Why the Russian government is bankrupt today. This is something overlooked by everybody else in the world, I think. I haven't, I haven't come across anybody mentioning this, and I invite your impact, and correct me if I'm wrong, on these numbers and these ideas. The underlying premise is it's like Uncanny Valley. Something's a little bit off. You can't put your finger on it, but it's true. Now, let me explain. When I was a kid, I used to listen to shortwave radio because we didn't have the internet and we didn't even have computers when I was a kid. And I listened to the voice of America, but also the voice of Moscow. It was during the Soviet Union. And they were always telling this line that everything was great financially. Everything was fiscally sound, revenues were good, and they were running a surplus and they had like this something called like a national wealth fund. This was the voice of Moscow. And I kind of knew something was off. I knew that this was not true. And when up until the day the Soviet Union collapsed, they were still saying everything's fine, nothing going on here. We're running a surplus, et cetera, et cetera. And I was thinking last night that that's very reminiscent. It's almost uncanny that it's it's like parallels today. Everybody's saying that the Russian budget is fine. There may be this year they run a little bit of a deficit. But let's speak to the facts and the evidence. They claim and, you know, any claim that they make probably is not factually true because there's no transparency and there's no independent verification. If a company doesn't allow transparency and independent verification in the United States, you know that something's amiss. But let's just say that what they're saying is true. They have 393 projected tax revenue for their budget. Billions of dollars if you convert into from rubles. They have 411 projected billion of expenses. That leads a what? $18 billion uh, you know, deficit in their budget. Everybody's like, nothing to see here. Let's go on because they have a national wealth fund of like 140 something billion dollars left, 142 billion. And again, even that is a stretch, I think. But these numbers have to be incorrect. And we're gonna back in through implicit evidence why they're 100% incorrect and correct me if I'm wrong. Oil and gas revenue. People are confusing revenue with profit. Oil and gas revenue is about, it's gone down significantly. Now the sanctions are, are underway. About 660 a day, okay? $660 million a day. Times 365. That gives you 255 billion projected for the year of revenue. And everybody knows profit is only a fraction of that revenue. Now the Russian official government says their expected profit from oil and gas, and that's oil, gas, liquefied gas, refined gas, and coal is expected to be 113 billion in 2024. However, Western estimates of oil and gas profit for Russia are more like 50, maybe up to 100, but let's say 75 billion a year for 2024. So that's profit. I, I really think is much, much lower, but let's give them that. And it depends on the value of the ruble and if the price of oil stays really high, et cetera, which again, I'm skeptical about. But let's give them the $75 billion of profit every year. Most people are quoting revenue and, you know, revenue is very different than profit if you know anything about business. So the estimated part of the oil and gas, part of the budget of, you know, tax revenue coming in is 50% from oil and gas. So let's shoot the moon and let's say they take 100%, zero retained earnings of the oil and gas 
profit of $75 billion and take that 100% into the tax revenue of Moscow. But if that's 50%, let's double it. That leaves us at the Russian collects. They don't collect, they collect $145 billion of revenue total from the whole economy. That's not their $393 billion projected. So instead of an $18 billion deficit, they're running about a $266 billion deficit, which in one year sucks their $142 billion national wealth fund to zero. That is a fact. If my math is wrong, tell me. But people are quoting revenue like it's earnings. If you have a company, you know, your sales are not your profit. And tax revenue is coming from profit, not your sales, bottom line. Even on your tax return. They're looking at these things. They don't take your total, you know, like... They, it's, it's AGI, they adjusted credits, etc. expenses if you're doing a, a business. You have deductions. So if, again, they're earning $75 billion this year in profit, and they take, which is a stretch, 100% of that as tax revenue, and they double that because they claim 50% comes to oil and gas, that's only $145 billion in, in revenue against a $411 billion in expenses. And I think those expenses are low because of the geopolitical event in Ukraine. So Russia is cooking the books. There is no way. You guys check me on these numbers. I'm the only person saying this. There are people are saying they're cooking the books. But I'm giving you the exact numbers based on arm's length transaction of revenue and then converting that to profit of oil and gas sales. Now the question is, how can they finance that deficit? In the US or Western countries, it can float a bond. But the reality is nobody can buy, no foreigners can buy, and this direct foreign investment is very critical that is cut off. You can't buy a Russian bond. So all that has to be internal. Some Russian guy who's making, let's say, you know, uh, Five hundred dollars, uh, you know, month for total wages. He has to be be able to buy a bond. That is not the reality. Maybe a few rich people can buy bonds or Russian bonds, so they can't do it that way. They're really not. They can't. Nobody in their right mind would buy a Russian bond, and nobody in the world except Russians can really be, you know, de facto. So how are they financing this? They're not jacking the tax revenues to, to sky high to be able to finance it. It doesn't make sense. They just physically can't. So they must be printing money, and that's why, that's why they have to stabilize this ruble, and that's why they have insane inflation in addition to the shortages. Oh, by the wheat, by the way, by the wheat, wheat production is projected to be about uh, 70 mmm metric tons, Compared to last year, I think it was like 120. So you got significant reduction, and I think it's going further with these. Uh, that's not including the geopolitical events in the breadbasket. So the whole country is under shortages. They don't have the ability to generate enough tax revenue. They can't float it through bonds. I've established that. Their national wealth fund, which is like everybody's, oh, you know, it's a war chest. You know, their national wealth fund is only $142 billion. That's gone. You know, money is easy to spend, hard to earn. Do you guys know this? Money is easy to spend, hard to earn, Moscow. And they're blowing it. And I, I think their numbers are, again, all off. But there is no way they're not bankrupt. And this parallels what happened in the Soviet Union when I was growing up. I remember that. I was listening to Radio Moscow. These neighbors down the street... They believed it. Hook, line, and sinker. They were learning Russian. Can you believe it? I'm not going to mention their names. And they were always like looking down on me a little bit because I was like, come on, guys, use your critical thinking. And again, I was just a kid. Critical thinking, objectivity, academic, just basic accounting. I did accounting for over 20 years. And in, before I was an academic researcher, 
investment accounting specifically, bonds, inverse floaters, mortgage backs, I know accounting. And that's a bad day for Moscow. I used to say, you know, accounting is a good job because it's like I didn't get my hands dirty. They're only numbers. At the end of the day, there are good numbers and bad numbers. I go home, I sleep well. Moscow shouldn't be sleeping well. They're bankrupt. I don't know how they're going to get out of this. They could print their way out maybe for a day or two before hyperinflation sets in. But l explain to me if I'm wrong. Again, if her revenue from oil and gas is 75 billion and 50% of their tax revenue comes from that, and that's if they suck up 100% of that, that only leaves them 145 billion in tax revenue against their 411 expenses. They have a hole they can't fix. I hope you guys check this, share it, this video. You know, I want, if I'm wrong, I wanna know I'm wrong. But the numbers don't add up. Russia, Moscow, you're bankrupt. My name is Mark Bernat. I'm a monetary economist. Have a great day. Thank you very much.